It's another Manly Monday, and I am taking the plunge. I decided to do it based on comments, and I've made a lot of notes for this one, so I'm going to be reading off of notes a fair bit, because I wanted to arrange my thoughts. Hopefully, something more structured will stop 25% of the knee-jerk. I have very low expectations for the reaction here, because... People won't watch to the end. I'm asking you to watch to the end before you comment, especially if it's a negative comment, because there is a conclusion here that summarizes the whole thing. And obviously, some men do get, they do see the things I'm going to talk about. Some women don't. There's only so much space in a thumbnail and a description box, okay? Generalities sometimes happen. We like specificity, but if I keep doing caveats, it's going to be four minutes until we get into this video. So if you like this kind of analysis, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon support is very important, and patrons have been getting sneak previews and and asking for their feedback, um, patreon.com slash Leanna K or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Now, I have gotten five things that most of the women I know get about She-Hulk and a lot of the men I know do not. So that's where this is coming from. Not all, not all, not all, not all. You are not a misogynist automatically if you don't like the show. You are not automatically an ally if you do like the show. There are a lot of other things about the show, including the very Rick and Morty pacing, especially in the first two episodes and the last one, that some people it's not going to be to their taste. Um, Some people don't like the goofiness. They like the more serious Marvel. That's all okay. It's when people are alleging a conspiracy on the flimsiest of evidence or not not keeping their reactions in the scope of this is nine half hour episodes of television, not the war in Ukraine, that things start to seem strange. And is it in the spirit of just communicating what a lot of women are seeing that men aren't? That's it. That's it. I'm not trying to tell you you're wrong. I'm not attacking anybody. This is just an analysis. Now watch the comments that are going to ignore everything I just said. No, you really are. You're a feminist. You're this. People who write that. Consider yourself mocked, everybody else. Here we go. Okay, the first thing that I've seen a lot of guys miss that a lot of women get, Jen starts off in the wrong. Yeah, she's mean to Bruce off the top. Women are mean sometimes. And men are like, oh, she was really mean. She was should apologize. She starts her journey off flawed more on this in the second comment about how women handle criticism versus how men handle criticism but the important thing to know about that episode is jen says she's got it handled she is adamant she is obnoxious that she's got it handled but she doesn't and we see that Going forward, the job losses, the disastrous dating, they're all signs that Jen is a shallow, hot mess. And I have had guys fight me on this, but this is what women's seeing. Begs the question, why is it a problem that a female character who in the comics is known for telling off her writer artist, what's the problem that she's a massive jerk? at the beginning of her series. And this is the critical thing that women recognize the signals and men not necessarily. The whole point is that it 
is offensive. It is more offensive when women do it. It hits harder when women do it because women aren't supposed to be mean. We know. Women know. That's why Jen being such a disaster is so cathartic. And they build in, in this show, the non-apology apology that she gives Bruce at the beginning near a car. And then there's a non-apology apology, again, outside, in daylight, exterior day, at the end, near cars, that gets thrown back in Jen's face. The bookend, right, including the Hulk smash moment at the end of episode eight, where everything before the finale leads up to, that all shows that Jen's rough, obnoxious, hot mess start is deliberate the same way when we see star lord and guardians of the galaxy for the first time he's a womanizing schmuck who forgot his hookup was still in the cargo hold of the ship right tony stark's a jerk at the beginning stephen strange is a jerk at the beginning star lord is a jerk at the beginning thor is a jerk at the beginning why can't jen be a jerk that's the question the show asks. And that brings us to point two. And this is a major one. So please try to absorb this. I would appreciate it. This show is about how women handle and absorb criticism. And, and you know, knocks. Not how men handle the negatives that they encounter in life notably the show handles the concept of imposter syndrome without coming right out and talking about imposter syndrome and this is one of the things I really like about how a show by women for women sort of handled this okay the first episode is rapid fire. It's the get in, get a lot done, have the big thing, show Hulk, have the origin, right? But as the show settles down and we start seeing Jen's social circle, Jen's family, women can see, and, and men may miss this. I'll get to why in a bit. But Jen is so consistently criticized in the show that it becomes background noise. You don't see it because she doesn't openly react to it because it's everywhere. And I noticed that men and a lot of people said that a lot of men didn't watch past the first few episodes. So they missed other stuff. But I noticed that a lot of guys were acutely attuned to the bad men moments, but they missed the stuff from Jen's female friends and family. And it finally dawned on me, the reason I think a lot of guys missed it is because on the surface, they seem to be helpful comments. But in woman world, those comments aren't helpful. They're digs, right? If Jen wants to be in her pajamas at 7 p.m. on a Saturday night, this should not be a deal. She wants to stay home. Fine. But no, no. She's not allowed to do that. She's got to go out and drink. And, and this is one of those things about modern womanhood. Some people love the girls' nights. I don't know anybody who likes girls' nights. But there are people who pretend to like girls' nights. Okay. But deeper. Jen's family is deliberately horrific. Like, horrific. And that family of origin sets her up for all the other abuse she takes on the show. You know, again, the the guy who makes her clothes is horribly abusive to her. She suffers all these indignities. She just eats it, eats it, eats it. And then she twerks Megan the Stallion and she eats it. She eats it. But her family sets her up for it with the dig, 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 right? Jen is constantly doubting herself. 
but you don't get that fake cheesy moment of, um, I have doubts. You don't get the WandaVision moment. And then, you know, Wanda has the big breakdown and then I don't need you to tell me who I am. Uh, Honey, Agatha just spent an entire episode telling you who you were. Jen's more realistic. She fakes confidence because that's what professional women are trained to do. Because if you show doubt, you have the dreaded imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome be bad. And this is at the core. And they don't come right out and say it, which I like, but... And I don't know how you do this in a couple of lines, but it's definitely there. The reason that Jen doesn't hulk out in that first episode is because Jen is in a state of what's sometimes called dissociative feminism. She's not feeling her feelings because she's so beaten up by the churn of criticism. She is, to an extent, oscillating between angry, numb, angry, numb, angry, numb, and it's this low-level thing. And you see all the all the flea bag tells, the drinking, the bad sex, the shitty tasting guys, right? She's not there. And so that seeming advantage she has in that first episode when, oh yeah, she's got it. She's she's in control. She's not angry. And oh yeah, she's angry all the time. But she doesn't understand what's underlying that anger and this is a very different thing and it's really hard to explain the difference between the the boxes women get put into the boxes men get into broad strokes typical stuff you know how you know different hormone levels and things like that process anger have anger express you know between men and women, but then also the fact that there are certain things men are allowed to do. There are certain things men aren't allowed to do. There are certain things women are allowed to do, certain things women aren't allowed to do. And women from a very early age numb out when it comes to anger. Because with men, anger is dangerous. With women, Certain types of anger are acceptable. That sort of facile, fake, man-hating anger is acceptable in women's groups. But anger at each other, anger at your mother, anger at your friends, no, no, not allowed. Then you're a bad friend. And this comes to point three. Everything in the show appears to be about Jen's choices. I say appears to be because that's the big twist ending, right? Jen's dating is about her, not men. It's not a commentary on men. It's a commentary on how Jen Walters invites abuse. Now, it's not about all men. It is about the man. More on that in a bit. Okay. We start very first episode with Jen very, very interested in Captain America's sex life. Jen communicates her feelings through petty sexual comments. Stick a pin in that. Remember that. But who else was very, very um, interested in Captain America's romantic life? Black Widow. What do we know about Black Widow? Black Widow thinks she's a monster because she can't have kids. Thanks, Joss Whedon. Um, But... Women who are invested in Captain America's sex life have self-loathing. This is a big signpost in the MCU. Okay. But what's interesting is that she goes from Captain America. That, you know, it's that that guy has to have had the pleasures of sex, right? That's Jen saying, I think he's a good dude. She doesn't end up with the super soldier, She ends up with the blind kind of nerdy guy and Matt Murdock is pretty dreamy in that scene. Okay. 
Now, Jen can't vocalize how much that moment means to her. But Tatiana Maslany conveys it in her performance. And then, of course, she bails out of it afterwards by, oh, we just had fun. Um, you know, I smashed Mac Murdoch, you know, he, 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 Hulk smash, which is a kind of a sexist comment, right? If it came out of a man's mouth, that would be a horrible thing to say. But then at the end of the show, her better ending has a meeting her family. That's not what you do with a casual hookup. Tell, 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 right? Pretty smart. Now, Here's why Jen's so immature that way. Jen has been primed by the women in her life to be abused by men. And this is something that women know, but it is one of those things that you cannot speak about because then you're thrown out of the girl club, which is why it's all coded, right? The people who say there are some dog whistles in the show are right, but it's not anti-male dog whistles. It's female relational aggression dog whistles because this is shit... You still can't talk about. Okay. Jen is so beat up by everybody except for Bruce. All the way down, down the chain. She's so beat up by the women in her life. She's a terrible judge of character, especially when it comes to men. And we see this because she misses the obvious tells, the obvious red flags in in various guys and i always forget to turn the sound off right there are so many great things we're like oh you know todd's bad news from the beginning the minute and she knows it and yet she still finishes you know why why she ever agreed to go out with that dude makes no sense but you got the, the guys who are just too slick too much beard oil, too presented. Those are red flags. But only a woman mature enough to know those are red flags sees them as red flags. A woman who has issues with vulnerability, a woman who is insecure, a woman who is trying to prove her own worth to herself and the women around her by dating these strutting fucking peacocks those are the women, those are the guys she goes out with. She has taste up the ass for men. And part of that, we see it, is her friends. She's not getting any traction as Jen Walters, so instead of tweaking it, waiting for somebody who will like her as her, her, her friend, Nikki, helpfully, because of course her name's Nikki, helpfully creates a dating profile designed for quantity over quality. It's She-Hulk, not Jen, right? It's an idealized dream girl that's wish fulfillment for the assholes who swipe right on it. It's not real. It's not a real vulnerable human. And Jen, again, has issues with vulnerability. Now, guys are not as attuned to these red flags, Especially guys who read comic books, because the guys she dates are not the guys who read comic books, right? The closest guy to that is, is Daredevil and then Pug. But, you know, so guys don't see the red flags. It's like, well, that's a well-dressed guy. He's taking pride in himself too much. There's a fine line between taking pride in yourself and ego. No guy... And this is just a joking generalization, right? No guy should spend more time in the bathroom than the woman in his life. That's the general rule of thumb. I'm not saying it's right. That's just the red flag line, right? And the mwah, beautiful moment was Josh. Because Josh comes on the heels of point four, which I'll get to in a minute. Josh is perfectly cast, and the fact that his name is not front and center until the next episode, right? Because the fact that they cast a Filipino actor and made him, like, 
non-threateningly handsome, like boyish handsome. And you look at the 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 other pictures, like the the uh, headshots and things like that, of the actor is he's a guy by the name of Trevor Salter. Um, you look at it; they 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 boyished him up, right? They made him less threatening, and the fact that he's an Asian guy, you know, Asian, Filipino, like just perfect, right? That asshole thing women do that they desexualize Asian men, right? Oh, he's non-threatening, right? Well done. Really well done. And he was so nice until the next episode where he was far too nice. There were too many disasters there. There's no reason any guy who was stable or good faith would keep coming back after the bullshit she put him through, right? So well done. But again, women see that. Men don't. Remember I said Josh came on the heels of point four? Point four, this, this, is, this is the one that I really found interesting. Every time She-Hulk and Titania are in the same place, they both lose. Now, the thing off the top, the first episode was rushed, so that that one's sort of messy. But, you know, Titania busts in the wall, and they're both like, what the heck? And there's two main showdowns between, direct showdowns between Jen and uh, and Titania, She-Hulk and Titania. One is the courtroom um, battle over the rights of publicity. And the other is the wedding, right? And of course, it's rights of publicity over a makeup line, right? It's the whole influencer thing. So very girly, girly, girly girl, right? And there have been major criticisms about Titania being a big loose end, her not being in the finale. Um, she was underused. I don't think Titania, people are like, she's the villain. She's the villain. There's not enough villain. No, Titania is not the villain. Titania is not the villain. More on that in a bit. Titania is another woman trying to make it in Kevin's world, okay? Not man's world, Kevin's world. And because these two women are both trying to make it in the same world controlled by one guy with a missing soul, it puts them at odds. Every time they go head to head, they both end up humiliated. In the court case... Jen has to completely debase herself, humiliate herself by trotting out all her terrible dates to prove she lived as She-Hulk. But of course, Titania loses the case, so they both lose. It's a humiliating, costly experience for both of them. And the whole thing about there was nobody on the show that wrote lawyer shows, that, that doesn't bother me because lawyer shows are not realistic to the law anyway. I kind of liked that Jen was not representing herself there she needed an actual litigator because it wasn't her specialty of law just saying but then there's the wedding right there's the wedding the awful perfect wedding the key line the keystone line to that is the wedding was on a Thursday and it was a cash bar and in woman world that indicates that the couple who are getting married are terrible people who want more wedding than they can afford at the expense of their guests. Cash bars are tacky as shit and you get married on a Thursday because it's cheaper because people have to go to work the next day. Or they take the day off and they're, you know, it's, it's trial by fire to prove they're good friends. Even though you're being a shitty friend, you've got a cash bar. Do a lot of men know this? No. Do a lot of women know this? Yes. Why? Women tend to be responsible for these things. Titania shows up. There's a fight. It's a humiliating fight with no clear winner. Very clear losers. Again, they both get humiliated. And Jen was so focused on Titania and how threatened she was by Titania, she missed the real threat in Intelligentsia via Josh. See how it all weaves together? But this comes to point five, the final thing that women see in She-Hulk and a lot of men don't. A lot of women see in She-Hulk, a lot of men don't. Kevin and the importance of Kevin. 
because the huge bailout, the huge loose end that actually bothered me emotionally, but I'll defend, you know, the more I think about it, the more I look at structure, the more what they, I think they were trying to say. OK, it bugged me, but it's good that it bugged me. OK, the revenge porn, porn bailout, the Hulk smash revenge porn is terrible, god awful. And I was really upset that they did not show Jen resolving that didn't show, didn't create guideposts for other women to overcome and keep their dignity. And the truth is that that is a truth. There really is no way. It's just a horrible thing that happens to you and you can do nothing about it. That's why it's so awful. And again, this is where we separate most guys from the Kevin in a given equation in nerd media, okay? Male comic book creators tend to use the sexual assault and degradation of women to make these female characters interesting. It is very hard to think of a female character that has not had some sort of plot line like that in their past somehow, okay? It's not interesting. Male readers don't like it. Female readers don't like it. Stop sexually assaulting women. It's awful. Stop sexually assaulting anybody. Moratorium. Police. It's overused. There's no socially acceptable way to come back from that. An assaulted woman is a victim. She's broken forever. And an assaulted man, oh my God, do you remember when they had Nightwing get assaulted in Batman comics? Oh, flip out. Couldn't deal. Right? Because it's something that happens to women. Right? And this is where we get down to the, the reality. Where, and this is where I think the show is saying something. And, and women got it. Men didn't. And, and this is why I'm making this video. Something is really wrong with a lot of these guys who write these stories. Not the guys who read the stories. You know, people, they consume the stuff that's available. They can't control it, right? But the guys that write these stories, the guys that approve these stories, something's really wrong that they find that much sexual assault titillating and interesting. It's a Game of Thrones problem, right? It's not that it happens. It has happened so much. And these are the Kevins. And Kevin, the robot parody of Kevin Feige, is the true villain of She-Hulk. Much like Odin in the original Thor, and you notice all the Thor shoutouts, all the Thor Easter eggs, Thor is through the whole thing. Thor's inspirational speeches are not admissible as evidence. Little Easter eggs in the background. The daddy issues. Same daddy, different issues. Right? Odin is the true villain of the original Thor. Kevin is the true vil villain of She-Hulk. Kevin sets all the plots. Complete with the convoluted setups and the loose ends and the ridiculous fights at weird moments for no apparent reason right? A story totally for women. And Jen straight up says this when she has her closing argument scene with Kevin. The average woman wants a story about Jen Walters learning to live as both Jen and She-Hulk. But it all starts falling apart as soon as she started to get a grip on that, right? Because that's what a Kevin finds exciting. Oh no, just punish, 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 punish. That no, women women want wins because that's too much like real life because of that thing about criticism I mentioned, right? And the the constant assaulting, right? The Kevins of the world want all that whiz bang shit. They want everything thrown at the wall. And I mean, the fact that this comes at the heels of Thor Love and Thunder, which was a solid romance wrapped in a whole bunch of distractions for the presumed man-child audience. And I say that I loved the freaking goats and the jealous Stormbreaker. I fell for that shit. But even then, I knew it was, hey, look over here. Hey, look over here. We're not going to give you too many icky feelings. Guys, don't worry. Don't worry. But that romance was so good, right? And the reason I say presumed man-child audience, yeah, that is a play on things. But that isn't actually the bulk of the audience, right? 
She-Hulk did very well. Very well for a Marvel Disney Plus series. Um, it's already middle of the pack and it hasn't been out that long. It, it's on par with WandaVision. And for female-led superhero series, it did very well. It more than doubled the premiere weekend of Ms. Marvel. Delivered numbers on par with Moon Knight already. Okay. Uh, it over-indexed, meaning it overperformed with Gen Z, millennials, black and Hispanic households. Those are big for advertisers. Big, 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 big demos. That's who they want. Why? Because white men tend to torrent. I don't make the rules. I just report it. Okay. And this is the thing. She-Hulk, and this is the thing women see that men don't see. Okay. Please try to take this as a reassurance that this, that, that the show does not, hear me out, okay? This is not a show where women are hating on men. Not men as a group. She-Hulk is calling out Kevins. Not men, Kevins. Men with power, enough power that everything is put through their lens. I talk a lot about I don't subscribe to male gaze theory. I subscribe to Hollywood gaze theory. And this is what I'm talking about. There are relatively few men that set the content for everyone else, right? The standard fanboy, we know the standard fanboy will be content with the same stuff they've always slung, right? And the thing I've like, I've watched this because I've always been the one going, no, no. Batman versus Superman wasn't very good. The Whedon cut of Justice League wasn't very good. And it was like, no, they found reasons to like it, right? And I remember right back to the original, like, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, right? It was all, it, it, was, it was always the same shit. People pretended the movie was the greatest fucking thing ever, because they were afraid that if they didn't say it was the greatest thing ever, they wouldn't get more movies, and so six months would pass, the next blockbuster would come out, and then everyone would be honest about what they really thought about it. And it would drive me fucking crazy. Drive me crazy. Part of it because I knew what a dick Joss Whedon was, and I could see it, right? I watched this happen. I watched the fan base get beaten into submission. Take it and like it or else, right? And this is the Kevins doing this to everybody else. Joss Whedon is a Kevin. A guy like a Harvey Weinstein for the Oscar set was a Kevin, right? There are Kevins out there, these gatekeepers, and they are all men. Jess Gao reports to Kevin Fage. Jess Gao can't do whatever she wants. Jess Gao did not control the marketing on She-Hulk. There is a whole other department for that. And guys like Kevin are completely happy to... Let Jess Gao take all the blame on this shit because they're kind of androids. There's something missing, right? And I thought back, it's like, why, why is this? Why have the Kevins of the world, these android, like John Lasseter was another one. Oh my God, everybody knew that guy was freaking weird, right? But he was the guy. He was the Pixar Kevin, right? Dave Filoni in Star Wars. Now, he doesn't have quite as much control, but all the, like, you know, TV Star Wars, that all goes through him and you see it, right? Um, he's a mini Kevin. <laughs> but, you know, Kevin Fage, big Kevin. Joss Whedon, big Kevin. James Gunn is kind of a Kevin. But James Gunn gives me hope because... He just, you know, he's a benevolent, he's more benevolent Kevin. Let's hope that um, survives his ascension to Walter Hamada status. Walter Hamada, massive fucking Kevin, right? Dan Didio, Ike Perlman, all Kevins, 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 right? These are the problem. Everybody has to eat the Kevin shit, Right? And to me, it was it was it was Joss Whedon sending setting up Agent Coulson to be the fanboy proxy 
And then what does Whedon do to Coulson? He fridges Coulson with the other guy who isn't manly muscle guy. One, one fan proxy kills another fan proxy to bring the Avengers together. Right? Coulson gets fridged to advance the Avengers. And then it became all about Thanos. Right? And that message of disposability, I think, is, is where the core of sort of, they hate the fans came from. Because, yeah, that, that's, that's a pretty shitty thing to do. Build him up as, like, the ultimate fanboy that gets to hang with the Avengers. And then, <coughs> right? The thing is, that, that stuff, those seeds, isn't coming from female creators or female characters. Those messages and the approval of everything that came afterwards is coming ultimately from male nerds with power shitting on nerds without power. And they do it usually through female characters who expect it to be male wish fulfillment, but aren't, right? But they aren't because Kevin's like, I don't want this and this matters, okay? Kevin's don't see the world like regular guys. Kevin Fage didn't understand why the android had a hat, right? There's something missing. There's a profound lack of self-awareness. You know, people claimed that the She-Hulk show treated criticism as trolling. But Jen's closing arguments, like, yeah, they, they did joke about the reaction, but they included like AOC references and stuff like that. It wasn't nerds. It was reactions to women in the media, in some cases by other women, right? It was just Everything. It's the internet. It happens every single time, not just with nerd media, right? Watch Twitter when a reality show comes out. It's the same shit, okay? But that fourth wall break, that closing arguments, asked to speak to the manager, Kevin thing, was a deconstruction with all the ongoing problems with Marvels, as they call it in a show, near perfect products, right? Jen wants stories about women not based in trauma. These, these, you know, the, the, the grim, dark comic thing loves watching heroes suffer. Not just female characters, male, male heroes too, wallowing in suffering, right? Missing that it doesn't land the same when it's a woman with women or with men as it does with men, right? That's not right. It's just true. They also called on the convoluted, called out the convoluted loose ends, you know, the, the and the by the numbers endings like the the by the numbers. It is the same fucking ending every single fucking time. And they do the big fight and then they have to go clean it up in the next installment because it's so fucked up. Right. You know, Loki's personality change from Thor and even Dark World to the Avengers. Oh, it's because of the Mind Stone, right? They had to backfill that because Whedon just couldn't be consistent. You know, Wanda's lack of accountability was also the Mind Stone, right? She didn't get her comeuppance until Multiverse of Madness. The big Avengers fight in the middle of Manhattan. You know, you don't see the human cost to that, how horrible it is until Hawkeye, right? And then Sokovia, yeah, they destroyed a freaking city. And that was the big, oh, the big exciting finale. But then they had to deal with the human cost in future episodes, right? And then there's the constant runners. Remember, this is about the show hearing and addressing criticism. There's so much hearing and addressing criticism that people missed it. It's almost like they did too much, which is interesting, right? For all the, the, the having fun with the trolls, they did address criticism. Because one of the things that Jen keeps saying is, whose show is this, right? And to me, that felt like nods to how Vision was a footnote in WandaVision. Loki was sidelined by Sylvie with the show on his name on it. Black Widow was saddled with a friggin' nuclear family. Now, I've said Yelena is awesome, but the mom and the dad? We didn't need that. And Captain Marvel got upstaged by a fucking cat and then got one punch by Thanos. Generally, the overemphasis on format in these Marvel properties, especially the more recent ones, is eating these shows alive. And all of that is approved by Kevin. There's always a Kevin. There's always a Todd. 
there's always a Blonsky, right? And Kevin's benevolent because he lets her in, right? He takes the meeting. He hears her out. But then if you notice, he cha- when he sends her back into her show, he changes the access so she can never do that again. It's a one-time thing, Jen. Use it wisely, right? It's always the man, the billionaire, the cult leader, the executive pulling the strings to make other people fight. It isn't men. It's the man. It's Kevin. And that's the thing. Women aren't looking to blame men as a class, as a group. We don't see that. That's what guys see. That's not what women see. Because women are getting smacked by Kevin and men are getting smacked by Kevin. And Kevin's a real good at getting out of the way. So everybody thinks they're smacking each other. Right? I've had a lot of conversations with women about why guys would choose to identify with some random asshole instead of Matt Murdock. Because I thought Matt Murdock was the message of, you know, give the guy who's not perfect a chance. You know, okay, she she ended up with a guy with no male gaze. But Matt Murdock's not Captain America. She starts at Captain America fucks. But Matt Murdock's a good guy who charmed her and, and charmed her at a moment that she wasn't looking to be charmed. That was a beautiful, beautiful moment, right? And I think that was the intent there. And here's the bottom line. We go back to the fridging of Coulson that makes everything sort of blinded here. Yes, I blame Joss Whedon. He managed to out Kevin Kevin, in, but Kevin was still Kevin. That's dia fucking bollical. Split diabolical. Fucking diabolical. There we go. Famous nerds, rich nerds, successful nerds do have tension with regular nerds. I have seen this. Okay. They're not like other nerd nerds. They're uber nerds. They're pick you nerds. They get there and it's like, oh, now I have power. Now the women will like me. Now, oh my God, I'm still terrified of women. I hate them. I hate everybody. Joss Whedon, right? Famous nerds, uber nerds, Kevin nerds are nerds with 100% more power and 0% more self-esteem or happiness. I've met them. I've worked with a lot of them. It's extremely important to remember that all these so-called woke, woke air quotes, I'm not saying it seriously, decisions that the fans hate went through one guy, the Kevin, or a series of Kevins. Based on big data analytics. Big data. That's why it's a machine, right? She-Hulk is angry. She is. And Jess Gow was sniping. She was. But not at all men. At the man. She was biting the hand that feeds her. And Kevin is such a fucking Kevin that he let her. Right? He let her. And, and he said a few times, no, that's hurtful. So he was allowed to veto every line in that fucking finale. Every single one. If you're going to be mad at somebody, if you think there's like, that's not a conspiracy. That's just the way these things work. But everything went through Kevin. Everything has to go through Kevin. Kevin's the guy that approves everything. Okay. Kevin, the Kevin, is the one that forces all these damn cliches. Because a character needs an arc. And the easiest way for a character to have an arc is to start them off as a relentless asshole who shits on all the people around them. Right? Women aren't blaming all men for that. We're not seeing that in the show. We're not tuned that way. That's what the Kevins of the world, the media moguls that let the shit get published, are letting publish because famous nerds, yeah, they kind of hate other nerds they resent other nerds they want to punish other nerds because they're not like other nerds they're pick you nerds but they're still not happy and women are still terrifying so what do we do make women look bad joss whedon um the only time a woman jess gow she hulk can actually take on the man in charge, is where we're feeling pissed off enough to not be cowed. 
when we're feeling pissed off enough to overcome our imposter syndrome rooted in hypercritical moms and shitty friends, we have one scene in an entire season we can speak truth to power and that's all we have the access and energy to do. See, it's not about men. It's not about nerds. It's about Kevins. That was the treaties of the show. Kevins. Okay? Hope you enjoyed this very anime. I tried to make it interesting. I tried to make it fun. My take on what a lot of women see in She-Hulk that a lot of men don't. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Hey, if you like this... Kick me a couple bucks, man. I'm going to get fucking roasted for this. We know it's coming because people won't listen. People won't get it. People are just going to scream because we're all being poked at by Kevin's. Thanks for watching.